Hello my friends and welcome. Let's go to the front lines update. We have the situation near to Dubrova. Russia tried to move their forces to counterattack Ukrainian army, however unsuccessfully. We even have the drone video. It was filmed on the thermal camera, so it happened during the night time. Russia tried to offend with a lot of the infantry. I wonder if you are able to see it on the screenshot, but there are around 50 persons. Unfortunately, I cannot show you the full video on this platform. For it, please check out my Telegram channel. So what Ukraine did to demolish or ambush this Russian convoy, let's say. The Ukrainian army used the cluster munition that we obtain or start to obtain from the United States of America. You see, all of those shots are from the small, some sort of the grenades that disassemble in the skies and hit the ground. Again, it shows the effectiveness of clusters. I told you that Ukraine is going to use the cluster munition just on the front lines and not against some sort of the villages or towns just on the open fields against the russian infantry armor vehicles and the russian defense lines the trenches however i saw one more video today and the cluster munition is not that effective against trenches i thought it would be much better i will also post it on my telegram channel so there is the russian trench over here and you see that using the cluster munition is not always good to target the trench itself yes maybe some of the grenades van into the trench but the majority went on the sides the standard artillery shell however went just into the trench causing losses so trench is going over here and it hit exactly the proper place this is the drone image of the bahmut suburbs so you can see that ukraine uses lots of the artillery shells to propel forward you may see some sort of the moon landscape over there and for sure russia keep the trenches over here in the forest line over here and also there is the railroad on the bottom one more evidence of the cluster munition in use this time near to avdivka town as you can see this is the classical trace of the cluster shell everything that is inside is also shrapnel but if there is the trench over here or somewhere over here the soldiers will not get any kind of the wounds i wouldn't say that it's useless against the russian trenches because the possibility of the small shell to hit the trench is quite significant if there are many of those small explosives grenades fighting continued in many of the areas but today ukraine gained some of the ground near to priyutne it was yesterday and it is today it is the single move for the front lines for today but we have tons of the videos tons of the footages from the front lines and i'm gonna show you them later in this video first of all let's speak about the sponsor and the partner of my channel the Atlas VPN. They continue with their awesome deal that they especially created for my followers, where you can get the Atlas VPN Premium for just 170 per month plus six months for free. It is the best offer on the market for the premium VPN services. They have what I need, fantastic coding of the military standard data encryption. Awesome speed, no matter what internet connection do I use, it has never been slowed down than I turn on the Atlas VPN. Actually, it's constantly on. I use it on my iPad, my iPhone, and my laptop and i can access that from the single account they really have the good support of the multiple devices i'm not the native english speaker so then i want to study some english i usually go to netflix to watch the french series but somehow it's not available here so i switch the atlas vpn on to watch my favorite series they have fantastic dialogues good for studying so my friends please check out my personal link in a video description just below where you may get the atlas vpn premium for just 170 per month plus you will get six months for free this extraordinary offer is time limited so hurry up to join the club it's been recorded that ukraine targeted the russian stronghold in kursk oblast i wonder what we used over there i'll share this one also on my telegram channel and there in the comment section you'll tell me what tools ukraine used to target the russian base i think that ukraine already targeted many of the russian positions on the russian territory also surveillance towers that russia installed very close to the border with ukraine recently russia started to use many of the t-80 tanks i wonder why but i see many of the drone videos with those tanks being demolished by ukrainian fpv drones or artillery 
There were a few of the big kabooms today registered in Crimea. They happened near to the Russian military aviation base. From what we know, the aviation kerosene reservoir was targeted and totally kaput. Plus, the ammunition warehouse started to detonate. According to the information coming from the Russian side, Ukraine used the Storm Shadow cruise missiles. We definitely need more long-range weaponry because, as you can see, those are very effective. According to the Washington Post article, the White House administration, President Biden, is not willing now to supply the Atakams missiles to Ukraine. I would say that in that case, without the fighter jets, it will take time for Ukraine to break through the Russian defense lines, and unfortunately, with many of the losses. Luckily, UK provided Ukraine with the Storm Shadow cruise missiles as well as France. But Atakams is better, it's more powerful, and also it's the ground-based missile. That adds some versatility to that weaponry. One of the Russian propaganda journalists, Rostislav Zhuravlov, was liquidated today in Ukraine also with the help of the cluster munition. I bet it was accidentally, because those propaganda journalists usually joined the Russian convoys. So not just this guy lost his life, but also there was operator and someone else from his group who sustained wounds. And you know, since Ukraine started to receive the cluster munitions, Russia has many losses in their propaganda. Alright, let's speak about the vehicle losses for both of the sides. For a couple of days, Russia lost 45 of the vehicles, Ukraine lost 24. Which is also okay for Ukraine, since we are on a counter-offensive operation. For the Russian losses, 45 of the units, we should lose 90, but we lost 24, so it's the great result of Ukraine, we save our forces, or try to do it as much as we can. Unfortunately, two of the Ukrainian tanks were totally destroyed, we are speaking about the T-64, one was damaged and two abandoned, probably they're gonna be evacuated from the front lines for the maintenance. As for the Russian side, they lost 12 of the tanks for a couple of days and only one was damaged, the rest are totally kaput. What is interesting here that Russia started to use T-80 tank, as I told you, just one loss they had for T-72B tank, the rest are T-80s. I'm quite surprised that Poland opened the factory for the maintenance of the Leopard 2 tanks. Honestly, I don't know what is happening, because Germany wanted to open the maintenance facility and they cancelled the deal, but today we have the news that Poland started the operation of the factory and some of the Leopard 2 tanks have already been delivered to that particular facility. We need it a lot, because as you can see, some of the Leopard tanks got damages, mostly because of the minefields, as for example over here, you can see the tank without caterpillar and probably there is the damage to the bottom of the tank and also to suspension. Germany is going to provide Ukraine with 300,000 shells for the Gepard anti-aircraft vehicles. As you probably know, Switzerland refused to supply those shells, that's why Germany had to start the production of those shells again. President Zelensky said that soon the Ukrainian counteroffensive will roll in with a new pace. We are close to the moment then the actions of the Ukrainian army will take the RPM because our forces are proceeding through the special places that were mined. And we are demining those areas. Actually, it's true. Also, President Zelensky asked for more long-range weaponry plus fighter jets for successful mission. Speaking about the Ukrainian advancement towards Priyutne, we have the drone images from the place, how Ukraine uses the FPV drones. Russia kept some of the armored vehicles in that place trying to repel the Ukrainian attack, but all of those vehicles were demolished, including the BMP-2. Also, we have the video of the Ukrainian soldiers storming the Russian positions in the forest line close to the Bakhmut city. The attack was successful, many Russians left their positions for good, but some were not able to do so. Again, all of that stuff I publish on my Telegram channel, so my friends, I highly recommend you to check it out in the video description just below. There is also the interesting video about the Russian 
ghost rider who took this motorcycle and tried to perform the surveillance missions around but was met with the ukrainian drone greetings again unfortunately explosions reported in odessa russia launched their attack using their strategic bombers they want to hit ukrainian ports to get rid of ukrainian capability to handle the grains and to supply the grains elsewhere. The United States of America successfully tested the autonomous drone that may stay in the air for one year. How is it possible? Basically, it has the electrical motors and the solar panel on the top of the wings. It is capable to reach the altitude of 65,000 feet. It is non-identifiable by the air defense systems. It may perform the surveillance missions. The only problem over here is that the drone is very light and the payload is kind of low compared to the other modern day drones. But I think this development has the perspectives. Yes, we moved towards the aviation news somehow. Today, Ryanair announced that they will enter Ukrainian market till the end of 2023. They're almost sure about it. They think that Ukraine will sign some sort of the agreement with the Russian Federation and the air travel will be again open on Ukrainian territory. Ryanair, sorry, but there is not going to be any kind of the peace agreements with Russia and Russia will not allow any kind of the commercial transportation in Ukraine for their own guarantees. It will never happen. Because the airspace in Ukraine is not safe, the European Aviation Safety Agency will never let any kind of the airline to fly over Ukraine. It is no goal for sure till the war is over, and it's not going to be over this year, unfortunately. For example, just right now, Russia continued to launch the cruise missiles from their ships just in the Sevastopol harbor, and all of those rockets are going to Odessa. Those rockets or missiles may actually appear at any point in Ukraine. My friends, I'm gonna keep you updated on situation in Ukraine. Don't forget to press the like to this video, and also don't forget to check my personal link in the video description just below, where you may get the Atlas UPM Premium with astonishing discount, especially valid for my followers. My friends, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.